So hi, everyone. Welcome to NASA Data Made Easy, getting started with synthetic aperture radar. I'm Sarah Lubkin, and I work for Earth Science Data Systems Program at NASA headquarters. And our other speakers today, and this is in the order that it was easiest to talk about, are Cindy Hall, who is also from the Earth Science Data Systems Program from our communications team, Heidi Christensen from the Alaska Satellite Facilities Distributed Active Archive Center, Andrea Donnellan and Jay Parker from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and Lisa Grant Ludwig and Megan Merkanian from the University of California at Irvine. Okay, so when most people hear NASA, they think of space, not Earth. Um, but NASA's Earth Science Division uses advantage of space to study the Earth processes that power climate, um, weather and natural hazards and the impact of those processes on life on Earth. So NASA gathers information about the Earth from a fleet of Earth observing satellites. And this slide shows the operating satellites in blue um, in green and those that are in development are in purple and those in planning stages are in orange. And one of those here in purple is NISAR, or the NASA ISRO SAR mission, which is an INSAR mission planned to launch in 2022. Okay, so the fleet of satellites and instruments on the ISS and our airborne observations allow NASA to gather information about the whole Earth system. And on the left side of the slide is a partial list of some of the observations and measurements that NASA collects through its orbital airborne and field programs. The Earth Science Data Systems Program actively manages NASA's Earth Science data as a national asset, whether it comes from satellites, from instruments, from air campaigns, or from field data. All this data is valuable, and not just while the mission is going on, but well into the future. And our job is to keep this data safe and make it available for as long as it's useful. Um, so we develop data system capabilities that support rigorous science, as well as interdisciplinary research, applications use, and even commercial use. And we make sure that our data is quality controlled, has the necessary metadata, and works well with other data so it can be used by pretty much anybody who needs it. Um, all our data is free and open, and this philosophy includes our tools and services on our Earth data and at the DAX. Any software we develop um, is also available. The code is available for use. Um, finally, we work to engage the Earth science community in our efforts so we can understand what our users need when we're developing our data systems. Um, this picture here is an example of NASA Earth science data being used for geology. These are raised beaches along the Hudson Bay in Canada that show how the landscape rebounded after the last ice age. Um, okay, so like I said, NASA data is open and you can use it for any purpose with no restrictions, and it has been since 1994. And we do our best to get our data to the public as soon as possible after the observations are made so it's available for research in a timely manner. Um, NASA Earth data is made available to the public through our Earth Observing System Data and Information System, system or EO Exodus. Um, once the data from the satellites is captured and cleaned, then um, sorry, then it's processed and archived and distributed to the public for science, applications, education, policy making, commercial use, pretty much any purpose that anyone anywhere wants to use it for. Um, and EOS just acts as that bridge between the satellite observations, the satellite collecting the data and people being able to use the data. So let me share a few facts about EOS this. Um, EOSDIS is the single largest repository of earth science data in the world. We have more than 40 petabytes of earth science data, which is twice the volume as the entire collection of the Library of Congress. Um, EOSDIS archives include over 12,000 and growing unique data products that have been used by more than 570,000 unique users. The data also includes new real-time data that's made available to the public within three hours of collection. Most of our data is not made public that quickly. And all this data can be accessed through our Earth Data website and through the DAX. So EOS DIS, um, the Earth Observing System Data Information System, is made up of the SIPs and the DAX. 
The SIPs are science investigator led processing systems and they process and update our standard products. So we have certain products that are long term that go through the SIPs. The DACs or the Distributed Active Archive Center process, archive, document and distribute earth data from all our satellite, airborne and fuel campaigns. Um, they also assist users in selecting and obtaining data. They provide access to data handling and visualization tools. They notify users of data related news. They provide technical support. They are happy to answer your questions. And the other thing about DAX is they're organized by scientific discipline. So they have experts who will work with scientists in those disciplines. So we have four DAX that are of special interest to geologists. The Crystal Dynamic Data Information System, CDDIS, supports the space geodesy and geodynamics community. The CDDIS archives and distributes mainly global navigation satellite system or GNSS data, which includes GPS and is used by the geophysics community mostly. Um, the Alaska Satellite Facility, which Heidi is from, operates the NASA archive of synthetic aperture radar data from a variety of satellites and aircrafts. And it provides these data and support services to Earth scientists. Um, this is a map made with Sentinel-1 data that's archived at ASF DAC, and it shows subsidence in part of the San Joaquin Valley in California between May 2015 and September 2016. And the areas of bright yellow and green are where there's the most subsidence. Um, the land processes DAC is a partnership between USGS and NASA and it supports land data remote sensing data products collected by sensors and onboard satellites um, and aircraft and instruments on the ISS. And these are mainly used by researchers studying land dynamics and environmental systems and ecologists. Um, and finally, PODAC, the Physical Oceanography DAC, hosts most of our ocean data. To use a mouse click. There we go. So the DACs are responsible for making sure that our data meets all the standards necessary for rigorous science. Um, and that means they ensure that our data is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, or FAIR, if you've heard of FAIR data. Um, all our data are described with rich metadata. We have strict metadata standards. There's a DOI, and the data is always associated with that permanent DOI. They're easy to access, and they're available in standard format, so they work well with other data. All the data is well documented, so science can be shared and replicated. And if you have any problems, the DACs are happy to help. Again, um, you can contact them directly or through our Earth Data website. Um, and that's the Earth Data website is important because if you don't know which DAC you want, it doesn't matter because all the data is available through Earth Data, um, which is our centralized ESDS website, um, and you can get data from any of the DACs there. There's two important features that help you find data. Um, Cindy's going to talk about these in more detail, but Earth Data Search is data centric. Users search for data by choosing what they want to measure or what instrument they're interested in. Um, you type in that search term and you find the data you need. Worldview is a visual search. Um, you can zoom in on an area and see the data sets that are available for that region. You can overlap the data sets to see how they work together and it gives you a snapshot of how the data will look before you go to the effort of downloading it. Um, and again, Cindy's going to talk more about that in just a little bit. Um, and so here's an example of an Earth data search that I did for SAR. I got more than 600 results, so it's easy to get an overwhelming amount of information. So because of that, we're going to talk about resources that can help you get started with NASA SAR data.